Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, heroes and villains. I'm your host, Deshaun Fauntleroy. I know your time is precious, so we're going to get right into today's show. In today's show, the big idea is Sam Johnson, founder of Strength Farm, a unique training facility training powerlifting, Olympic lifting, and CrossFit style training, along with sports performance training. And they also work with the recreational adult athlete. Now, as I said before, the big idea in this show is Sam Johnson. Show notes, links, conversation and more at sportsmastery.com slash 51. Normally when I'm talking to coaches about weightlifting, I get a lot of misnomers. And in my experience, what I found is that these individuals, they were horrible training Olympic lifting when they were younger. They never chose to you know, take a certification or learn how to do the movements and lifts on their own, whether that's regressions or progressions. So what they do is try to find ways to knock Olympic lifting by saying it's dangerous for you. You hurt your back, you tear up your knees and all these negative things versus looking at the benefits of Olympic lifting. Now, the gentleman that I have coming on today is the 2016 USA Weightlifting Oregon State Champion. He also made it to the Nationals down in Dallas, Texas in 2015. A USA Weightlifting Level 1 Sports Performance Coach. Holds a certification from Portland State University Football Strength and Conditioning. A CrossFit Level 2 Coach. A CrossFit Olympic Weightlifting Coach. And a CrossFit Endurance and Pose Running Coach. This gentleman has a unique background that goes back to the military. Without further ado, I want to bring Sam Johnson on to the show. Sam, tell us a little bit about your military background. Hey, Deshaun and everybody listening. My military background began when I was 18. I went to Lincoln High School in Portland, Oregon. Graduated in 2006. Joined the Air Force because I really didn't have very much money to go pay for school. And I had some injuries in high school playing football that could have been prevented, you know, had I been training properly, but I had no idea how to train uh, strength and conditioning at all back then. My dad was in the Army for about 21 years, so he suggested I go into the military. I did that. I was in uh, for seven years from 18 to 25. I spent time in Afghanistan uh, close to a year. I spent a few years in Japan and Korea, Europe, Mississippi, Texas, Missouri, Florida, and a few other places that I'm sure I'm forgetting. But basically, my experience in the military really helped develop my leadership skills. And they taught me a lot about managing people as well as managing yourself and your emotions and and be able to harness every skill set that you develop over time to be able to accomplish whatever your goals are. Ladies and gentlemen, if if you're listening to this, what we have on, you know, from my perspective and what I do, this is like having a five star general on the show. I need you to go to I, iTunes, I go to iTunes, subscribe, rate and review. Give this a five star. We have somebody that served the country here and it's taken me a while to pin this gentleman down. Sam, What I wanted to ask you, man, is before we go any further, how has your military background and experience relate to you doing sports training or being a coach or being or being or competing at the highest level, you know, uh, with USA weightlifting? For sure. So my my actual personal passion is working with sports athletes. You know, it doesn't really matter what sport, but specifically I started working with football players because my younger brother played football at Lincoln with me. And then he went on to play at Notre Dame for four years where he was a four year starter. And so uh, that was while I was in the military and we would, we would meet up, I would go to his games and in the summer we would train together and really like him and I and a couple of his teammates developed, uh, you know, a real passion for working with each other and, while I was in the military, I started competing in CrossFit myself and uh, went to the CrossFit Games in 2013 in Los Angeles. And with that experience, that gave me the ability to, to understand what it's like to push your body to its limits. The military does that in its own right, but uh, the CrossFit Games are you know, run by an, a former Navy SEAL. And basically, he comes up with these events that you know, entail all kinds of things. So like, for example, a two mile run carrying a 
a 50 pound log on your shoulders and then you go drag a sled 500 yards and then you have to do a hundred burpees, you know, and that was just the first event and that was, you know, out of 12 events over three days. So those experiences really gave me the ability to understand, you know, when a, when a person's being pushed, they always have that next level of, you know, where, uh, you know, my, your body might be feeling pain, but your mind, your mind has the real control. Your body, your body wants to shut down because your body's going to search for comfort no matter what. But when you're in, when you're in that zone where, you know, you either fight or, or you fly or fight or flight, but, uh, you got to tell yourself, you know, you can push, you can push more and you can do more. So really, I think that was the best thing that the military taught me was that there's no real limit to human potential, um, you know, within the confines of whatever your goals are. So do you, do you feel that like some of the concepts that you've learned from the military in your experience has helped you with your weightlifting career and then definitely being a gym owner and coach? I think so. I think that that discipline that was instilled in me from day one in the military, uh, they really do a good job in basic training of breaking you down as a person from, from whatever your previous experiences were and taking you and taking a bunch of other people and putting you together and making you a, a unit. Uh, they have to, you know, they make you work with hardly any sleep and they make you do all kinds of, of crazy things. But really those experiences and especially being deployed in Afghanistan where you can literally lose your life in a split second, it gives you the perspective that no, no minute is guaranteed. So, if you put that, if you put each minute and you have discipline with each minute and each second, everything that you're doing, every rep, every squat, every sprint, every box jump that you're doing, if you put focus into it, like it's your last time, there's no possible way that you're not going to get better. And so when I started competing in Olympic weightlifting, it was because I really enjoyed doing the clean and jerk and the snatch. And I also started to see a lot of benefits athletically. Like those movements were not ever taught to me as a kid in high school. I never was taught how to do a power clean or how to do a power snatch. So when I started doing those, I started seeing my body change and and turn more into what looked like a professional athlete as far as gaining muscle in the core and and gaining leg strength and, and most importantly, explosiveness from, you know, jumping to sprinting change of direction, all of those type of things. I, I could dunk a basketball before I started Olympic weightlifting, but now I can throw it off the backboard and dunk it two hands. And I had never even thought that that was, you know, a reason to start doing Olympic weightlifting. It was just because I like to do it. But all those benefits really made me realize how, you know, great Olympic weightlifting is for athletes and taking those certifications that I took and continuing to read up on, you know, different coaches and coaching styles and and actually applying different philosophies to athletes. That's when I became to realize that, you know, Olympic weightlifting definitely has a really important place in performance. You know, I really appreciate what you said about being in the the military and living really moment to moment in terms of where you're at and in, in situation and time. And in like just the dangers that you're facing and how you apply those concepts to Olympic lifting, because what I found with my athletes, you have to be in the moment. You can't drift else that bar gets away from you. You're going to either miss the lift to the front or you're going to miss it to the back. You know, um, in my experience, like I I was just like you, I just learned how to squat and bench press in high school. And when I got to Portland State and later down at Western Oregon, this was, uh, you know, back then. They just told you to get in there and clean. We didn't even do snatches. Yeah. You know, we didn't do jerks. We did a power jerk. You did a lot of push pressing, but there was no fundamentals being taught. Mm-hmm. And my background is similar to yours where I just started studying. I, I, I got into USA weightlifting, did their sports performance uh, level one certification, and I kept doing the movements. And what I found that for me. It's really easy to teach when you take your time to learn the progressions and regressions and you start with a technique bar or even a PVC pipe. But more importantly, what I found with my athletes, the biggest thing that I see once they start to feel some accomplishments 
is their confidence increases tremendously. That's yeah. one of the biggest things that I've seen, especially with the female athlete. Once they get to spinning that bar and rotating their arms through, keeping it close to their center of gravity. And once they, you know what it's like once you finally conceptualize the movement and you can feel yourself doing it right. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. I, and, and you know, outside of that, of, of course, it's going to increase your vertical jumping ability and your broad jumping ability. And even when I was doing the work wrong, it, you know, as far as playing college football and later some indoor and semi pro football, I still saw the benefits. Yeah. And those, when I had a chance to reflect, that's what made me a believer. Because if you're doing it wrong, even with the light weight, you're not going to get hurt. I never got hurt from doing Olympic lifting in terms of the clean and jerk and like power snatches. Yeah. You know, um, so I wanted to get into some of the things that I know we're going to talk about is Olympic weightlifting for sports or athletes. We're going to talk touch on mobility, neuromuscular coordination, increasing force production, lateral stability, linear power and overhead strength. So, Sam, let's talk about the relationship between mobility and Olympic weightlifting for athletes. Definitely. So when you when you break down the movements as far as a, a clean, a power clean and a power snatch, the power clean, you catch the bar at your shoulders in the front rack position. So you have to have your elbows up and you have to be in a good, powerful position where your core, you know, and everything is in line. What you have to be able to do first is front squat. And to be able to front squat, you have to have good thoracic mobility, meaning and also external rotation in your shoulder joint. Now, for anybody listening, that just means you have to be able to hold a barbell on your shoulders, keeping your elbows high. And if you can't do that without pain, then that means that you should be start. You should start working on some corrective exercises with a roller, with a PVC pipe, with a band, and uh, I'm sure you have a few really good exercises yourself, Deshaun, that you have your athletes do. But here at Strength Farm, we have a physical therapist uh, named Natalie Sandreas, and I know actually you're in a physical therapy uh, office over there. So so you have the yes. same same things at your disposal, but but she she helps me out a lot with. Um, assessing athletes and, and taking them in and, and giving them exercises to do each day when they get here. Cause they get here, you know, they have a warm up, they might just be hanging out or on their phone or whatever, but that's all time. Like I said, that's time that can be spent working on getting better. So mobility for me is number one, you know, for anybody that's out there that can't do a squat or can't do a, a push up correctly or can't do, do, you know, an overhead squat. That means that, it doesn't mean that you're not able to eventually. It just means that right now you need to take a step back and focus on the movement patterns and, and working on your your mobility to be able to actually do those movements. Yeah, definitely. And for some of y'all who don't know, you know, and what I would say is close to an exact definition of possible of mobility is being able to move through a desired range of motion. That means you're trying to do something, you know how to do it. You can conceptualize how to do it appropriately, whether you can do it or not is a different thing. But being able to move through a desired range of motion, that's as simple as I can put it. That's as simple, simplest as it's been told to me. And that definition really stuck with me. Now, what I can say, I am fortunate enough to be in a clinic, you know, and I'm getting all different types of mobility. When you're around a physical therapist, it's like continuing education all day long. But what I will say, who has some good material out there is Kelly Starrett in his book, Supple Leopard. Oh, yeah. We keep that in our um, lobby. You know, um, so let's let's discuss um, neuromuscular coordination and Olympic lifting coach. Definitely. So, you know, at, at Strength Farm, we're really, really big on the mental side of things. That's why we have a mindfulness instructor and we have an integrated mindfulness course that we use, you know, at least once a month or twice a month for most athletes that can make those. But really connecting the mind and the body is performance. I mean, that's the definition of of, of performance. You know, it's, it's being aware of your body while it's moving and while it's not only while it's moving, but while it's moving fast, you know, at all speeds. So the coordination that's developed in Olympic weightlifting, uh, between your mind and your, and your muscles is super important for sports. I mean, when you look at everything that you do in sports, it's all body awareness. Like, you know, if you don't have body awareness and, and you're playing a sport more, more often than not, there's probably going to be somebody that's going to 
dominate you if you if you can't you know conceptualize playing defense or you can't conceptualize you know how to turn uh change the direction really fast you know these are all things that are developed we in a way weightlifting uh routine because it's a controlled environment and you have a coach that's teaching you each movement and then when you do each movement you're able to actually train it over and over and over so that it becomes second nature to you and you know i mean Luckily, there, there are a lot of places like Strength Farm and like, you know, Pro Force, like where people can actually go and be coached in those things and develop their athleticism uh, without putting themselves at risk on a field all the time. Right. You know, uh, I, I really can appreciate what you said about, you know, the uh, neuromuscular coordination and having a mental train, having the mental training and having a mindfulness coach, because it brings me back to the birth of sports mastery. And the subtitle is psychokinetics, just essentially linking the mind and movement. Sure. So, I mean, we're in 100 percent agreement. You know, one of the benefits that we often talk about with uh, Olympic weightlifting and definitely with athletes is the increase in force production. How have you seen that working with the athletes in your facility Definitely. So, I mean, when you when you look at the setup for a clean or a snatch, you know, there's different verbiage out there. But usually when I talk to an athlete that has no idea what that means, I have them walk up to the bar and get into a jump position. So so meaning like if they're going to get ready to jump as high as they can, either vertically or horizontally and their feet more often than not end up under their hips. So it's basically you know, you have that position. And then when you catch the bar, you're in a, in a squat stance. So your feet actually move out to about shoulder width or a little bit outside shoulder width. So when you look at actual production of force, the Olympic weight, weightlifting, uh, the whole goal of Olympic weightlifting is to move a moderate to heavy weight fast, but you have to start with the light weight. So whatever weight you start with, you start to learn how to move it fast and how to, how to really use your legs to explosively move that bar either to your shoulders or overhead, in that, whether it's a clean or a snatch. And when you're doing this and when you're re- repetitively doing this, your body is actually a- adapting to those movements and you're able to create more force over time through your legs, meaning that you're able to, to, to drive harder into the ground. And when you actually translate that to sports like track and field or football or basketball and basically anything that requires any kind of force being produced through your body, the Olympic weightlifting movements help you harness that and help you develop that and take your athleticism and your ability to move fast and jump high uh, to that next level. You know what? Ab- about four years ago, I did that uh USA weightlifting sports performance certification up in Enumclaw, Washington. And I was really fortunate enough to have Mike Conroy, who was the president of USA weightlifting at the time. He was one of the instructors for the course, but I'll never forget this. He he just simplified Olympic weightlifting to the point that he said, all you're doing is jumping with weight. You're doing plow metrics with weight. Yeah. You know, that that's all it is, you know? And, and it's just like with, with the, with the squat and the deadlift, when I've seen my athletes increase their cleans vertical jump goes up when they increase increase their cleans 10 yard or 10 meter sprint or block start it goes down you know so there, there's a lot of benefits to olympic lifting um i would just say if you're a coach out there you're a parent listening it's not hard you just have to start really light with your own body weight or a pvc pipe and take your time for sure you know, I wanted to uh, get into uh, lateral stability, coach, as it relates to Olympic lifting. Not a lot of people talk about this. So, um, yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, really. I mean, I think it's it is an overlooked benefit of a w- Olympic weightlifting uh, because for the most part, it's, you know, Olympic weightlifting and, and power cleans and snatches and, and jerks. People look at them and they think you're only moving linearly, meaning you're only you're only going straight up and down or forward and backward, which is not true. Like I said, your, your legs set up in a jump position. So under the hips, you jump that weight up, like you said, to your shoulders or overhead and to stabilize and catch that weight, your feet move to that squat position or a little bit wider. So your feet are going laterally, they're moving out wider and you have to catch and stabilize through the core and through the legs, whatever weight that you're using. Now, even if it's, even if it's 25 to 
you know, 75% of your body weight, that's still an external force that's being applied on your body that you have to be able to stabilize. And when you look at actually what you're doing on a field, you're mostly, or, or a court, you're mostly doing, you know, working with your body weight. So if you can stabilize and you can, and control that weight in a power clean or power snatch, um, when your feet are moving laterally, then that means that you're building strength and you're building more stability in those joints and in those muscles and tendons to be able to main, maintain good structural stability while you're out doing your sport, performing your sport. So when you change direction, you're a lot quicker and you're also a lot more stable. So what you'll see with a lot of athletes that actually train these Olympic weight weightlifting movements and train them correctly over time is you'll see that they are a lot less prone to ACL injuries and to uh, patella tendon ruptures and to hamstring uh, pulls because they actually have a stronger uh, muscle in those, in those or tendon or ligament. They have, they have stronger joints to be able to stabilize in those movements. Yeah. And, and, you know, the other thing to simplify it even further, coach, is you're 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 moving up in a in a vertical fashion with speed. But then you have to catch the weight and stabilize. So what that also means is you're going to accelerate and then you're going to decelerate and then reaccelerate, which happens in sports all the time exactly. at the blink of an eye. So when you talk about the benefits of uh, Olympic weightlifting, I'm not going to say it's they're they're unmatched, but it's, it is up there high on the list of should do's with the appropriate coach or instruction you know um talk, let's talk about uh, olympic weightlifting and linear power definitely i mean when you're looking at you know sprinting you're looking at uh like you said accelerating decelerating stop and go all those type of things those are exactly what you're training and, and when you pair olympic weightlifting movements to actual sprint training or to actual like you know jump training i mean like you said, there's there's almost no comparison as far as uh, the force production and the movement, the amount of muscular contraction at the same time that that is involved in the Olympic weight weightlifting movements. Um, you know, there's no comparison as far as like developing linear power. There are some other movements out there, like a uh, for example, a hex bar deadlift that I'm a big fan of, um, which uh, Ryan Flaherty from from Nike performance he he actually created a force score based on this this trap bar deadlift now i i had never really trained with the hex bar uh for an extended period of time because like i said i was an olympic weightlifter but i was testing out a program that he does uh with the trap bar deadlift you basically are setting up in a in a power position or in a in a quarter or half squat you're driving through uh your legs using that same movement that you use in the first and, and second, almost second pull of the the clean or the snatch. Now, the only thing different and the only thing missing in the trap bar deadlift is triple extension. So triple extension is the movement that you do where your ankles are extended, you're up on your toes, your knees are extended, your legs are straight, and your hips are extended. So you're actually leaving the ground like, like you're going to jump. It, you know, that's that whole, that whole thing about, you know, weightlifting is jumping. You're not doing that in a hex bar deadlift. You're only going to the point of, you know, your hips and knees being extended, but your ankles aren't extended. You're not actually jumping. So that's where I would say those movements, the, the clean and jerk and the snatch, they have superiority as far as linear power to the trap bar deadlift is that you get triple extension rather than just like a dual extension. Yeah, I heard he had a good... Uh a program of 40 yard prediction with, with his system. I know uh, I don't want to digress, but I know it's interesting. And one day I'm going to reach out to him and have him on the show because I heard he has some good knowledge and he has some good training methods going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. He would be a great guy to uh, speak with. He, he's a definitely a, a very intelligent person. I have had the chance to talk with him a couple of times. Um, but, but basically, yeah, his force, his force score is uh, if you can, if you can hex bar deadlift 3.2 times your body weight, so it's a relative uh, score, then then you have the tools, not necessarily saying that you can do it right away, but you have the tools to be able to run a sub 4, 5, 40 yard dash if you're a football player. Because I think his specialty is football training and he trains guys for the, the combine. Um, but so so he'll take guys and, he'll, you know, it's basically a, a easy way for him to see if they have enough 
force production to be able to run fast, essentially. Right. I I agree. You know, um, let's talk about overhead strength, man. You know, um, we do a lot of sides press. We do overhead presses. We do push presses, um, power jerks. You know, um, I can see how the overhead strength is developed. And for me, what I what I tell all of my athletes, if you can overhead squat and we can do these sides presses and you can catch a snatch overhead appropriately, that is going to transfer over quickly or quicker to the football field than a bench press. Because, you know, with Olympic lifting, you're standing up, your arms are up. It really simulates faster to that blocking position or stiff arm in somebody. Definitely. So just to just to be able to perform an overhead squat with a PVC pipe or a broomstick, your body has to be able, you know, going back to that neuromuscular coordination and mobility piece, that the first things that you need to learn is stabilizing your body through the full range of motion of overhead squat with no weight, basically a a PVC pipe or a broomstick. So to do this, you have to have, you know, your hips have to be mobile. Your your hips have to, they cannot be tight. Your core has to be stable. So you have to have a strong enough core and then your shoulders have to be stable. So you have to be able to externally rotate in your shoulders and hold that weight straight over your body in the frontal plane, meaning your, your center of balance of your body. And when you actually start adding weight, that's when you start to see, you know, a little bit uh, where 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 an athlete might have strengths and weaknesses. So, you know, if they're if they're able to squat the weight, but they're not able to hold it up overhead, then, yeah, they need to do more sots presses or behind the neck overhead press. But there are some things out there, you know, as far as training goes or misnomers with uh, baseball players, not not saying that this is still a thing or whatever, but this was, this was always something that I heard coming up was that baseball players shouldn't lift overhead because it will mess up their ability to throw. I think basketball players too, but people said basketball players shouldn't lift overhead because they, yeah, I heard us saying it before with hoopers. Yeah. Because it'll mess up their shot or, you know, whatever. But from my perspective and what I've seen is that uh, there are people like Michael Jordan you know, everybody obviously knows who Michael is and, and LeBron and, and all these athletes that they they make it to the NBA. And then once they actually start, you know, they have, they have trainers on their teams that start having them. You know, you might see Michael Jordan when he's a rookie compared to his 10th year in the league. He's bulked up. He's got muscle. He's His shoulders are bigger. He's stronger. He can jump higher. He can run faster and he can play defense. He's not. That's just, because. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, coach. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, it's not because he's just doing bench press. You know, he, he's working his overhead stability, his overhead strength. And then he's also doing, you know, some Olympic weightlifting and box jumps and squats and all those type of things. So, yeah, I'll let you go ahead, though. No, uh, I, w- I was just going to add on that that his trainer, Tim Grover, had him doing everything that we're talking about. Yeah. You know, he talks about it in his book, Relentless, and he also has a book called, I want to say Jump Attack, Okay, you know, yeah, where, where he's talking about jumping, but he, he has the barbell work in there. You know, I, I could I could sh- I could lend it to you sometime. For sure. That would be awesome. You know, uh, but you um, know, going back to the overhead strength piece with with athletes and just for everybody, I mean, um, being able to hold weight overhead in a stable position is only going to help improve your shoulder health in the long term. So, I mean, you're going to see less chance and less likelihood of rotator cuff injuries, which is a very common injury out there. And it's very preventable because if, if you're actually training your shoulders correctly in all planes of motion, which the rotator cuff does do, it's called a rotator cuff because it rotates in all ranges of motion in every direction, then you're actually going to be stable in those positions. Your rotator cuff and, and everything around your shoulder joint is going to be stronger and as long as you maintain your flexibility and, and, and your ability to move through those ranges of motion without any limitations by tightness in the muscles, because that's another misnomer is that people think by lifting weights, you're getting tighter or you're becoming less flexible. When in reality, all that you need to do is maintain a stretching routine and a mobility routine either before or after your exercises or both, which, you know, I'm a big fan of the dynamic mobility Uh, based warm-up and then static stretching at the end more yoga style stretching um, then you're actually going to become more flexible as you get stronger and the the new muscle that you're developing and the new strength that you're developing is going to only reinforce 
those new ranges of motion and new strength that you're gaining and and you're actually going to be less prone to injury so i think that's the number one benefit of overhead training and, and weightlifting and uh and the way that we look at performance is that when you're able to connect your mind and your body and you're able to move your body in every range of motion and you train every range of motion with strength and with the ability of maintaining good technique you're only becoming a better athlete but not only a better athlete a less injury prone athlete meaning that you can work and you can you can perform in your sport longer than the other athletes that are not training as hard as you ladies and gentlemen boys and girls parents coaches if you're listening to this re- just remember that stability is being able to hold a position and not go into an undesired range of motion you know um listen to what coach sam is is discussing here and talking about now as we get into the uh two minute drill coach if you have one or two uh, pieces of advice for sport coaches, strength and conditioning coaches, or personal trainers, what would that be? Never stop learning. Never stop asking questions of people that you come across. I mean, you know, just the fact that I reached out to you is because I, I wanted to pick your brain and just kind of learn how you were doing things and, and just, you know, have this conversation as, as many others uh, have had the opportunity to have with you. But yeah, just, you know, keep learning. Never think that you know it all. I agree 100 percent, man, because I, I've been able to take a couple of my football athletes to to uh, a level of Olympic lifting where they're one is at the end of his freshman year. One is at the end of his sophomore year. Well, they would have no problem in a college football strength and conditioning program. Sure. And I, I'm really fortunate that you reached out to me with your background because and, and we, we've discussed this before. We're going to take those two and compete next year. Yeah. You know, they're ready to do that. And you're somebody that I trust in, you know, with your background. And I'm sure I'm going to learn some subtle nuances because I've never competed in Olympic lifting. You know, I've done the lifts. I teach the lifts. I teach them very thoroughly. But I think they're going to get something great out of it and really the benefit for them is I try to I, I try to let them know and remind them that USAW gives scholarships too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know. What sport. would be two weightlifting is a sport, so Yes it is. You know, what would be two book recommendations, coach? I think for me like uh, you know, I'm I'm really into a few books that I've read recently. Uh the best I would say one of the best if not the best book that I've read so far is e- Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. That was a really uh, interesting book and, and really helped, especially, uh, you know, anybody that's had any kind of marginal success at all in their life. I mean, just the fact that we're sitting here talking to each other, I, I consider a success. And uh, I, I think it's really good to understand that ego is the enemy. Um, another, yes. another book that I really am a big fan of is Grit by Angela Duckworth. And that book to me speaks on basically that hidden attribute that nobody can really see in somebody except for over time seeing them just continue to push and continue to work hard and not pay attention to what's going on around them as far as you know distractions or or uh you know whatever whatever turmoil is going through your life uh, just not letting it get you down and continue to work no matter what i mean i think they look for that in uh, a lot of the, the military special ops um, from their training. The first the first six to nine weeks of special forces training has nothing to do with actually killing people, which is their number one job. It actually has to do with breaking down each trainee into the most like basic way of, of putting them into a position of like, you know, life or death. Like if you're underwater and you feel like you're going to drown, are you going to try and come up for air? Or are you, are you going to actually continue with your mission regardless of whether you drown or not? Because they, they only want the people who have the most grit in special ops because your job is to go behind enemy lines and it is to find people that, you know, the country has deemed as dangerous. And no matter what happens, you have to know that, you know, there might be a chance that you don't come back, but you have a mission to do. And so I think grit to me was like a very good, book that just speaks on you know having perspective every day but also just outworking whatever you think your mind uh your whatever whatever side of your mind is trying to tell you to stop just outwork that and and never stop 
I can really appreciate this. I want to remind you, audience, again, go to sportsmastery.com. When you find this show out, give it five stars. This is a five star show. I know, Sam, you have a podcast too. tell the people how to find your podcast. man. I do. On our website, strengthfarmpdx.com, we have our our podcast on the on the bottom of our pay, our homepage. And we just you know, we try to talk about things as far as like, you know, different kind of like how we're doing right now, just different aspects of performance. Um, and when, when we say performance, we mean like mental training and physical training as well as emotional. But, you know, you need to have everything working together. So, um, you know, when you when you look at Strength Farm, like we're a performance center, we're, we're looking at things from, you know, mindfulness, yoga, physical therapy, basically, like I said, everything that I can get my hands on to make sure that the people that come here and the athletes that I work with um, in, in Strength Farm or outside of Strength Farm, they have the most resources possible. It's been real. I appreciate you coming on. Why don't you go ahead and uh, tell the people uh, where they can find you at online, your website, and um, what's your address, you know, for the people that's in the Portland metro area? How do they find for you? Sure. So our website is strengthfarmpdx.com. And our, our address is 1720 Southeast Hague Street. We're right off of the Ross Island Bridge when you cross the Ross Island from coming from uh, Southwest. Um, some people know about Portland Futsal. We're right across the street from Portland Futsal. But also the Orange Line on the Max, it, it runs across the street from us. Um, and, and, you know, what, what I was going into earlier is just the whole purpose of, of Strength Farm and why we're here and how I came up with the concept of the place is that strength is for everybody and everybody can develop their strength in different ways whether it's mentally emotionally physically you know whatever but whatever your goals are whatever you're trying to do in life i mean just making sure that that you're putting your your 100 percent effort into you know everything that you're doing and i started strength farm with the idea that you know as a kid when i was growing up my parents couldn't afford a trainer for me and they couldn't afford a, a gym membership for me to go to a gym that had like a good coach and um or a good program because you know first off they didn't know and then second you know like i said they didn't have the money so for strength farm and what we're doing i think it's really important to put out there that we're an affordable facility and a place that you're gonna you know for the value that you actually get there's there's hardly any other place that i know of that is providing mindfulness yoga physical therapy olympic weightlifting training sports performance um and mobility all within the same spot and also available to people of all ages. But you heard it here first. If you're here, we both know why you're here. We all know why you're here because as sports mastery, there's no hijinks, there's no shenanigans and no boring ass presentations. You heard it here first. Well, I'm here with five star general, Sam, you know, look him up and I, you know, I really appreciate you listeners. I want y'all to have a good day. Thank you for coming on, Sam. My role is to help student athletes develop the mental skills for success in sports, which carry over to their life as well. I work with normal people who are under additional perceived pressures to perform in their sport. My goals are to teach student athletes how to be more confident, focus better, stay composed under pressure, practice more efficiently and develop more effective pregame routines. I become an, I become an extension of the athlete support team. Unlike a psychotherapist or psychologist, I do not use couches, prescribe medicines, or work with abnormal behavior. The main difference between my sports mastery program and a psychotherapist is that I work with athletes on sports performance enhancement. I tend not to get into personal challenges such as divorce, breakups, grief counseling, or abnormal behavior. Although those areas of life do affect sports performance, when need be, they are addressed. My philosophy is that you cannot separate the mental from the physical when it comes to performance. After all, decisions, thoughts, images and feelings drive motor behavior. So how do you know when you need or can benefit from my sports mastery? program? My goal is to help the student athlete identify barriers to hard work, identify barriers to teamwork and enhance sports performance by improving mental skills for success. 
Do you have any doubts about your sport before or during competition? Do you get so anxious that you don't have a calm mind or think straight in competition? Come easily frustrated when things do not go according to plan. So when you consider these questions, the next obvious question is this. When is my sports mastery program needed? You don't perform well when others are watching you. The sports mastery program is needed when you maintain doubt about your sport before or during games. You feel anxious or scared when you perform in competition. So how can the student athlete benefit from the sports mastery coaching program? They will have improved focus and the ability to concentrate and manage distractions. Develop systems and strategies to increase confidence and eliminate doubts and fears. Develop coping skills to deal with setbacks and errors. Find the right zone of intensity for their sport. The student athlete will also learn to develop and enhance communication skills. The student athlete will benefit by learning to develop a healthy belief system and identify irrational thoughts. The student athlete would also benefit when they learn to improve and balance motivation for optimal performance, develop confidence post injury. The student athlete will benefit from my sports mastery program by learning to identify and enter the zone more often. At the end of the day, my sports mastery program does not apply to a wide variety of athletes. This program is for the serious athletes only. Most of my student athletes are in junior high, high school, and college. However, they are highly committed to excellence in seeing how far they can go in their sports. My sports mastery program is not something they need. It's something that they want. These student athletes love competition and testing themselves against the best in their sport. They understand the importance of positive attitude and mental toughness. These student athletes want every possible advantage they can get, including the mental edge over competition. The first thing we do is identify the student athletes hopes and dreams, pains and fears and barriers and limitations. This serves as a guideline and helps the student athlete to think about mindset. When we first meet in person or virtually, I ask more questions about mindset and beliefs based on assessment results so we can develop a complete picture of your mental game. Once the game plan is developed, we will begin our work on mental skills that apply to your current and specific challenges. I present a sports mastery program that is customized to the athlete's individual needs. I always include the core foundation mental skills for all of my athletes. We apply the sports mastery concepts and skills to practice, pre-performance preparation, warm-up routines, and post-performance assessments. The next step is to decide if my sports mastery program is something you want. Not everyone wants to take the time to learn about mindset and how it affects an individual sports performance. I can tell you by participating in my sports mastery program, you'll set yourself apart from other student athletes. I help the student athlete transform shake their limiting beliefs, silence monkey mind chatter, and equip them with the tools to succeed. Sports Mastery will provide you with the tools to maximize your game in competition and in the classroom. To learn more, visit sportsmastery.com coaching.